All right, I have an R290 cooler. That's not cooling. All right, so I'm gonna go to the temp controller. It's showing that the compressor is getting power from the controller, um, or at least that it's set, trying to send power. Temperature's 56 Fahrenheit, which is 13 Celsius, so that tells me the temp controller is reading the correct temperature. I'm gonna go check this evaporator coil. Make sure it's not frosted or frozen or anything. It's completely clean. All right, I'm gonna check the two fans really quickly. So left-hand fan is working. And my right side fan's working as well. All right, so I'm gonna go work from the back of the unit. You can pull this condensing unit forward, but everything I need is at the back here, so it's just easier to spin the unit around and just work from here. All right, so my condenser fan is running. I'm gonna check if my compressor's running. So we're getting 0.97 amps. So I'm kind of leaning towards a restriction or a leak in the system. And okay, compressor just ramped up. You can hear that chattering noise. It's almost like the compressor's pulling down and stopping. That's really weird. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and gauge up here. Um, if you look at my filter dryer, there's no high side access port. So when they charged this unit and did all the work and did their evacuation and all that, um, they were only working from the low side. So I'm only gonna get half the half of the story here, unfortunately. Uh, I could tap into anywhere on the discharge line, but then I would have to braze that hole again and I just don't wanna go through that. So let's see if we can figure it out from here. So line tap is on the suction line. I make sure I tighten that thing down pretty tight. And now I'm going to I'm going to pierce the line. I'm going to go all the way down. And we're going to back off and see what happens to our pressure. So our pressure's gone up to 83.9. All right, so now I'm going to get a call for cooling. We're at 87 psi. All right, we're pulling down to 80 psi and we jumped right back up. So something funny is going on here with this compressor. 85 PSI, we're barely pulling down. So I'm gonna take an amp draw, make sure that it is running. All right, so I have 0.9 amps, so my compressor is running. 83 PSI. All right, now the compressor is pumping. We went up to 1.2 amps. You can see the pressure is pulling down to 74. Compressor stopped again. Amp draw is going to 0.9 amps. Now my compressor is pumping again and it stopped almost immediately. So if you listen very carefully and watch the amp draw, when we have low amp draw, the compressor is not pumping. When it goes up to higher amp draw, it starts pumping. So just listen really carefully here. You'll hear almost like a buzzing noise. So I did replace all the start components and I'm still having this exact same issue. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is determine what our section pressure should be. Now, because we have a cap tube, it's gonna be a fixed pressure. So how we determine that is we take the evaporator TD. In this case, the TD is equal to 20 Fahrenheit. So we're gonna take our desired box temperature, so 35 Fahrenheit, we're gonna subtract that evaporator TD and that's gonna give us our 15 Fahrenheit. So now we're gonna go and find our 15 Fahrenheit on the PT chart. So 15 Fahrenheit, 
corresponds to 36.3 PSI. So our current box temperature is 56 Fahrenheit. Uh, we're getting 85 PSI in our suction. We should be getting 36.3. So that's telling us the suction pressure is low. Um, based on the amp draw and all that, we know the compressor is bad. Now, if I could have taken the high side pressure, uh, you would have seen that the uh, head pressure would have been low. So whenever we get a high suction, low head pressure, we're looking for an inefficient or bad compressor. All right, so I'm gonna let the refrigerant out. Cause it's R290, we cannot reclaim it. Uh, obviously make sure there's nothing that's combustible around. This kitchen actually does not have uh, any gas appliances. Now, if you were anywhere that had combustibles or anything that's combustible, uh, there's actually a bag that you can reclaim that into. Okay, so I've sweated in an access port now and I've sweated in the filter dryer. I just torqued in that Schrader valve. Now I've left that end of the filter dryer. I've left that end of the filter dryer closed. Okay, like it came from the supplier. And I've left my cap tube open. That's because I want to blow out my cap tube. Okay. Uh, the reason for this is you don't want to go through uh, doing your nitrogen test and then vacuuming, then recharging and finding out that, hey, I have a restriction somewhere in this cap tube. I've had that happen to me once before. Uh, you make that mistake once, you don't make it again, and you lose one to two hours. So anytime I open up a system and I change this filter dryer on these little coolers or freezers, I always blow out this cap tube. All right, so I'm going to set my reg. Okay, I'm going to start at low pressure. Okay, if it's coming through nicely at low pressure, I don't need to go all the way up to 100 PSI or 150 PSI. Okay. And then, but my goal here is to run it at the design pressure. So my design pressure is 35, but I'm gonna run it all the way down to 10 PSI. I wanna make sure I have good pressure, okay? So I have good pressure now. I'm gonna close my manifold gauge. We're about 35 PSI, so that's gonna be our operating pressure. I have great pressure here. Okay, now I've had it where I have good pressure here, but I don't have good pressure at 10 PSI. So I'm gonna bring it right down to 10 PSI and make sure I have good pressure through there. I don't want it trickling through at 10, I want it coming through nice and steady. So we're coming down nicely here. You can hear I still have good pressure. We'll bring it down to 10. So I'm pretty confident here that we don't have a restriction. All right. Still really good pressure. Great pressure there at 9 PSI. So I'm going to let the rest of the nitrogen out. So I'm just going to pull the Schrader really quickly. I got to pull the Schrader out anyways because I got to brace this cap tube back into the filter dryer. All right, so I've braced that cap tube back into the filter dryer. Now I'm going to put just a trace amount of refrigerant into the system. I'm gonna use R290. You could use R134A here for your leak test. All right, so I've only dropped like maybe an ounce in there. Okay, I'm gonna hook up the gauges now and perform our manifold or our nitrogen test. 
So you can see I have about seven PSI, which is more than enough for a trace amount. All right, I'm gonna bump in some nitrogen now. Okay, I checked the, the rating plate for the uh, low side setting. I'm gonna make sure I don't go above that. In this case, I'm allowed to go up to 165 on the low side. I'm gonna go nowhere close to that, okay? So I'm gonna let my pressure in nice and slow. You don't wanna crank that thing open and, and blow something in the compressor. Just take your time at this point. And then as it's filling up now, I'm just gonna quickly pass my hand over to make sure there's no obvious leaks. I don't wanna dump in like 100 PSI and then be like, oh, there's, there's a leak, but I was pretty thorough with brazing and obviously used my inspection mirror and took my time. But that's just a habit. I always just check the joints with my hand before I get up to 100. All right, so I'm gonna close it off right here, okay? Okay, as my system's trying to equalize now, I'm gonna do a leak test with my combustible leak detector. Okay, I always hit up the O-rings on my gauges first. Just make sure they're not leaking. Those things, it doesn't take much for those to get damaged. Okay, so we're good there. Now I'm gonna go check uh, the suction port here that I brazed onto the stubby of the compressor. I'm gonna go all the way around the joint. Just really take my time. I'm not really in a rush to do this. If, if this portion here takes two, three minutes, really who cares? I'm waiting for the system to equalize anyways. All right, so I'll go hit up my suction line. Then I'm gonna hit up my discharge line. Making sure I'm going all the way around. You don't want to move the meter too quickly because uh, it gives false leaks sometimes. So I just make sure I'm not too jittery with it. All right, hit up the cap tube, we're good there. And then we're gonna hit up our liquid line where it comes into the filter dryer. And so far, so good. I'm happy with that. So now we're gonna go do our standing pressure test. Our system did equalize at 116.3 and 119.4. I usually go in 10 minutes intervals. We'll come back in 10 minutes. All right, we came back. This thing hasn't changed. We're all good. I'm gonna let the nitrogen out now. So I removed all the nitrogen. I'm gonna put on my core removal tool to remove that Schrader valve because I'm gonna pull an evacuation right now. So we're hooked up. You can see we're pulling down in a vacuum. I'm gonna pull down to 500 microns. All right, evacuation's complete. I've put in about half the charge. You can see I have 50 PSI in there. All right, the bottle's not taking much more. I gotta fire up the system. And I'm gonna charge it while it's running. So we're looking for about 36 PSI suction pressure. So I'm gonna slowly charge it back in. Get our critical charge to four and a half ounces and then see if it corresponds to our pressure. So we're at four and a half now. Sorry, you can't really see that on the scale. The light's not really in the best angle there. suction pressure is coming up we're at 72 Fahrenheit ambient we're almost at 35 suction pressure all right so we already figured out the suction pressure should be 36.3 psi now we're gonna go figure out what our head pressure should be so we're gonna go ambient temperature 
plus 30 Fahrenheit. So in our case, it's 71. I'm just going to put 70 just because this chart isn't super accurate. It goes up by 5 degree increments. So 70 Fahrenheit plus 30 Fahrenheit is going to give us 100 Fahrenheit. So if we go over to our PT chart, 100 Fahrenheit equals 173.9. hundred seventy three point nine PSI all right so we already determined that we're looking for a 36.3 PSI suction pressure and for our head pressure we're looking for 173 PSI all right so my head pressure is at 140 uh, it's not coming up but my suction pressure is good Okay, so my amp draw is nice and steady now. We're not going up and down, up and down. The pressure's pulled down. It's staying steady. This compressor, compressor is pumping steady now. It's not doing what it was before, where it's kind of pumping and turning on and off, on and off. Okay, this is the condenser coil. It's kind of a funny coil, and I'll get into that after. But it's not your typical condenser coil. And we got down to temperature, 3 Celsius, and we've cycled off. All right, so the only thing that didn't work out there was the head pressure. Now that 30 condenser split I use is a theoretical one. Because this is like an overseas unit, I can't really contact the manufacturer to find out is it a 30 condenser split. So in this case, it was a 15 condenser split. I showed the condenser coil really quickly there. Um, it's not your typical fin tube one. It was like a wire tube one that you'll see like on a domestic kind of application. So based on that, uh, I'll take notes of that and know if later down the line, if I ever have a condenser that looks like that to look for a 15 or 20 condenser split. There are units that use 20 condenser splits like Trollson, for instance, or sometimes Terrison will use, um, 20 condenser split. So 30 is just kind of like a theoretical that I use to calculate my uh, head pressure off the ambient for the condenser split. Now the second part there, the compressor amp draw was amping up and down, up and down. Now this is the third compressor that I've seen done this. So uh, it seems to be an ongoing issue, but it's kind of a good hint to look at so that you know what to look for. If you ever see a compressor or I guess an embraco compressor that's ramping up and down like that.